I can just start with the fact that we now know that you're in the mix to be manager of the year. Your reaction to that? I'd absolutely delighted. You know, there's a real kind of profound feeling of pride and honour. You know, the fact that you've been voted. Uh, you get this accolade from your, your peers, you know, for people that are, are in the job managers as well. It's, it's, a, it's a brilliant feeling and I'm, yeah, I'm honoured, absolutely honoured to be in that company, you know, that I'm nominated for that uh, in my first year in management. So I'm thrilled, I'm absolutely thrilled that I got that from my, my peers within the game and yeah, I feel great. And obviously you're on a list that includes your old mucker. Derek McInnes, mm -hmm. I mean, have you, have you been in touch with him? Have you been I seen to him last him week, up? we were at a golf, no, 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 we were at a golf day together last week, uh, but I've not actually spoke to him recently, but listen to me, in such esteemed company, you know, John McGlynn as well, you know, who's had an invincible season, fantastic, but listen, there's a, lo a lot of good managers, you know, fantastic managers in, in Scotland, you know, and there's other ones that maybe didn't get picked, you know, but you thought probably should have and had a real case to be that. So for me, personally speaking, and, uh, you know, to be nominated and in that company by your peers, I'm absolutely thrilled. And as I say, there's a real feeling of, I'm honoured, you know, and it's a great privilege. I know Derek was asked at his press conference just a little while ago about it, if he'd spoken to you at all, he said he'd a missed call from you on his phone, he was needing to get back to see what you were wanting. Aye. I mean, it'd be a bit of banter between you, because you've got a chance to see who's the best manager now. Well, no, it's, it's, listen, he's, since I've, you know, he looks after his club, I look after mine, and he's had a tremendously successful campaign. You know, we're doing okay, you know, and we've still got a bit to go, you know, to see where we, we finish this season, but... No, it's, it's, listen, I don't know why that was a missed call, but, but listen, we, we talk regularly anyway and we'll continue to do that. To the game now, um, huge game, isn't it, this weekend? Yeah, yeah, it is. it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's the reason I've said that, it's the reason why we're, we're in this position, you know, that we, we've, we've, we've had a campaign that's allowed us to compete against the other top five teams in the country. And we've enjoyed, you know, you've seen the performances the last couple of games we've played against the best teams, you know, and this is another... Example of that, St Man are a fantastic team, they're up sitting in fifth place on merit, they've got a fantastic manager and Stephen Robinson and uh, it's just pitting your wits against the best now and as much as you know, we put ourselves in this position and we're going to enjoy playing against the best, playing at that elite level, we realise what got us there and we realise what we need to do to make a fist of it when we're up in that top six and I think you've seen from our last three performances probably a real determined team and there's a real edge about us just now we're getting into a match that you know it's, it's a huge game it is a huge game but everyone is you know and we look forward to it and the fact that we're at home you know is a real added bonus I think for us because we've been very good at home and we love playing in front of our home fans so yeah we look forward to Saturday very much. Obviously nothing will be decided in terms of Europe but a win would very much put you in the the box seat, wouldn't it? Well, it would. You know, obviously St Myrna are in that position at the moment, sitting in fifth, you know, a couple of points ahead of us. So if we were to win the game, but we know everything is going to be so difficult, you know, we're going to need to work really hard and execute a game plan to, to win that game. But if we were to get over the line and be successful with that, yeah, it would put us in a good position. But as you say, nothing will be decided on Saturday. It's very much a, you know, it's, it's a game and there's four games to go and there's a lot of points to play for. But certainly the significance would be leapfrogging them in that position. Ask what your team uses. Yeah, Lyle Cameron will be back. You know, obviously that slight uh, tweak in his hamstring. He's back. He trained uh, this morning, so it's just Joe Shaughnessy with a slight uh, uh, back issue with Curtis Main, but he's back again. Uh, he tweaked it in the warm up actually before the Celtic game, but he's back. He trained today, so out with Joe, our captain, and Owen Beck. You know, get a full clean bill of health. Can I ask you a quick question if I may about VAR? I see it was announced uh, or revealed earlier on today that the SFA's independent VAR review panel have been publishing their figures in terms of decisions and correct decisions, VAR decisions. And I've got it written down in front of me just so I remember. I think they're saying that there's been 26 incorrect VAR decisions this season. I think that's an increase of 10 since February. And they point out the fact that there's been 1,181 VAR reviews and I think it's all been circulated to the clubs I'm just wondering what's your, your thoughts on that and I guess they would argue that it shows that VAR is working Listen I've always been an advocate I've always said that anything we can do to improve the game you know in terms of the standard and the officiating and everything about it and I think VAR is a tool that you know it's taking us a bit of time to get used to it. and these figures I've not, I've not heard you've just enlightened me there I never knew about these figures but if there is progression there then obviously I would encourage that because anything we can do to Im improve the product of our game and, and VAR being you know that kind of 
it will help officials you know, to make right decisions, which are huge, pivotal decisions towards loads to do with a football club. So if there is that finding at the moment, then I would, I would encourage that. And I've always said that anything we can do to improve the game, I would be an advocate of. Tony, uh, great to see uh, Lyle, you mentioned him a second ago, uh, making it an awards nomination uh, double. Uh, he's in the running for Young Player of the Year. He really is like one of your own, isn't he? A real Dundee boy. Yes, he's brilliant and, and we're all thrilled for him. As a group, we're absolutely, you know, and the boys have all taken a couple of tables out to represent him, you know, and hoping that he gets that award. And even on young Owen Beck, as an example, is coming up, you know, to make sure he's there. So, yeah, we're all delighted, you know, it's, if he achieves, we achieve. We're very much that kind of team. You've seen that all season and, and we're, you know, the level of performances that he's put on, I think he's there on merit and fingers crossed he can maybe go over the line with that award. But there's a great sense of, uh, again, pride, honour and, you know, you, you, you hope that he achieves what he's achieved because he's had a fantastic season. You know, he's started the season with a good chat and it's been a, it was a wee bit turbulent at the start, being in and out of the team, but he certainly matured as a young player and I think you see the, the level of performance he's putting, he's putting in week on week consistently has put him in that position. Yeah, he's a terrific player, a terrific young man. Are you wary though? Are you bracing yourself for, you know, the attention of bigger clubs? Because you would think he'd maybe be on other clubs' radars by now. Listen, that's the nature of the beast in football, you know, it's in competitive sport, you know, but football particularly, if you're doing well, you're going to attract suitors. So that comes with the territory and all we'll do, well, we've got the opportunity to work with Lyle Cameron is trying, as has happened this season, he's got a really close relationship with not just myself, but all the staff and, and our job is to try and develop and improve him as a footballer and I think with the relationship we've got with him and all the players in the club, I think you've seen that, there's been improvement and development throughout the squad and, and Lyle's a perfect example of that. And just, just away from uh, the game, I, I saw today plans uh, unveiled for a, a major upgrade of the Dens Park pitch. Um, what, what are your thoughts on that? And what does it say about the, you know, the club's commitment to you know, getting things right and giving the players a, a, a terrific surface to play? Well, with? listen, I would absolutely welcome that. Because you see, I mean, you've all witnessed the way that we play. We've got a playing style that we want to get the ball down, we want to play. So if we can play in the best pitch available, it's in our interest. So it's great the club are making that commitment and the players are... The players are buzzing with that as well. There's other commitments to the, you know, it's a forward-thinking football club, Dundee Football Club. There's talks of, you know, training ground, stadium, partnerships. So it's an ambitious club, and it's something that ties in with my own ambitions. So I'm, 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 I'm greatly relieved to hear that that we'll be playing on a, a really good surface next year, and it'll something that will help our playing style. Great, thanks. So when you come back to the uh, managerial <coughs> nomination, how big a deal is that for you, given that it's your first year in management? Aye, really big, really big, to be honest. I mean, when I got the call, you know, I was a wee bit, you know, I wouldn't say surprised, you know, there was an element of surprise, but, you know, when, you, when you're, as you say, when it's your first year in management, I kind of set out to do what I want to do. And, and to get recognition, I think, from your peers is a massive thing for me, you know, to people that are in the job and know the, the difficulties, how hard, how challenging it can be to be a football manager. And, and certainly in the first year, you know, it's all right saying that I did have a lot of experience, you know, I think I had 800 games in a dugout as a, and as an assistant manager. But when you come into the job as manager, you need to, I come in with all the energy as a as a new manager, you know, and try to combine the energy and the experience. And, and listen, you just work away on a day-to-day -day basis. And as you know, I kind of assembled a staff and a group of players. And to get the recognition for that from my peers is a, yeah, it's an overwhelming, it's a, it's a brilliant feeling. I'm really, really thrilled. Is there a bit of vindication? Because obviously I've been an assistant for so long, just proof almost that you can do the job, that you've got your Dundee into this position and you've been nominated. I suppose there's an element of that, but the biggest thing, it's, it's, a, it's a feeling that I'm honoured, you know, that the fact it's been recognised by my peers. You know, that's the biggest thing for me, that people that know the job and people that are in the job have recognised the job that you're doing. And vindication, I don't know if that's the right word or not, but no, it's, it's certainly for me, it's a, it's a great feeling and it endorses kind of on a day-to-day -day basis everything that you're trying to do. And, and listen, although that kind of award or the accolades awarded to me, it's attributed to my staff and my players because, you know, I'm the figurehead of the football club and it's great to get the recognition, as I say, but it does, I attribute all that to the daily work that goes on at this football club and, you know, my staff, particularly, you know, bringing in Stuart Taylor, who was my best signing, you know, and Scott Patterson, uh, Matty Castle, Alan Combe, Robert Keel, all the staff underneath and that, that close bond that they've got with the players and the the amount of work that the players have put in, you know, has resulted in this. So I would attribute that to them. In terms of 
this game this weekend. Obviously, Dundee have not been in Europe for 20 odd years, St Mirren nearly 40 years. I mean, how big a game is it for the two clubs in terms of this opportunity? Yeah, of course it is. Of course it is. But it's, it's a product of how well both clubs have done all season. You know, we've got ourselves into that that top six, which, you know, would argue maybe both clubs are punching above their weight, you know, looking at that. But we're now in that in that arena, you know, and we're going to be facing each other on Saturday with a fantastic motivation, you know, the opportunity to get and experience European football that, as you said, both clubs have not experienced for, for a number of years, you know. So to be in that position is great, but listen, it's, I can only affect what I can affect with my team and it's another game, you know, we've played St Man three times this year. Twice away from home, they've beat us, but we had, had a good victory against them at home, and it's very pleasing that this, when this fixture came out, that it's a home fixture for us because the players, the staff, we all love playing at home. You know, the the fans really play their part, and we're looking forward to this Saturday being at home. You, you talked about this being the point of the season when players are appealing to suitors to come out and you know come to them and see what there is. So on that subject, how are things for you looking at players who have been progressing through this season? Say that again, sorry. I'm, I'm Players that you're looking to bring to Dundee. Oh, of course, yeah, yeah. No, there's listen, there's there's constant in the background, there's constant work going on in terms of recruitment. I think this is my third window. So that never stops, you know, and it's and we're doing that, we're identifying targets and we're looking at squad at the moment and blah blah blah. But you know, I think it's very important that you know the next four games are absolutely pivotal and it and it, and it requires, it demands that real kind of I've used the term before, that real laser focus to make sure that yes, that's all going on in the background, but the focus is very much in the the games, the four games that we've got remaining this season, and then, as I say, we've been doing work, and we'll look towards next season and, and see how we can we can build and we can improve and we can develop again. And the relationship with with Burnley does that help the situation? With yeah, yourself? yeah, it would do, it would do, but we'll just wait to see how that, when that eventually gets formalised or whatever. But uh, yeah, of course that would do. But listen, there's a lot of work going on in the background, and as happens at every club, you know, I think you try and work a couple of windows ahead. So we're no different to any other club, and that's what we're doing at the moment. John, we'll get to the game in a, in a minute, but just get from a player's point of view the news that your manager's uh, made the short list for manager of the year. Uh, no, it's obviously a, a great achievement for himself. Obviously, it's uh, it's good for the club as well to get that recognition. Lyle as well, obviously, for a young player of the year. So, no, it's a uh, credit to both of them. They've, they've both done a good job this year, so it's thoroughly deserved. And what it does, uh, I guess, adds to the narrative of just how good a season this has been, doesn't uh, it? I know, of course, obviously, it's, uh, like I say, it's good to get the, the individuals the recognition as well, but I think collectively as a group, I think cementing the top six, obviously, would, uh, would suggest how good a season it's been for us and, and those accolades that, that the two of them have received just, just shows that. Talk to me about how big a game this is on Saturday. Mm. I know, it's massive, I think... Um, I think if you said to the group at the start of the season that, that we'd have a game against St Mirren for a potential European spot, it's, you know, you'd bite your hand off for it. So it's a, it's a good position to be in and, and we're looking forward to it. But obviously we, we know the challenges that's there. It's, it's, not been, it's, it's been a bit mixed recently in the results. Well, I mean, we've cemented the top six, but we've went four games without a win. So as a group, I think we're sort of a bit um, kicking ourselves at, at that. But it's harsh to be too critical when, when we're in this position. I mean, obviously nothing will be decided hmm. this weekend, but, you know, your European destiny is, it, it's in your own hands. It's about yeah. just going out there and grabbing it, isn't it? Uh -huh. No, definitely. So um, I think we'd rather be this side of the, the top six than the other side of it. So it's, uh, like you say, it's in our own hands and, and we know that. So it's um, it's definitely a game we're looking forward to and, uh, no, I'm, I'm hopeful. You meant it's interesting what you say at the start of the season, if, you know, maybe if people had said back then, that fast forward to now, this mm -hmm. is the situation that you, you'll have been in, they might have raised a few eyebrows. Uh -huh. Have you surprised yourselves as a group? Um, I think obviously the, the main objective was to stay in the SPL. That's that, you know, the, the team that's coming up, so no one's got to hide away from that fact. But I think as the seasons went on, well, since I've been here since January, um, we've definitely reached those targets and, and we're checking them off one by one and then it, it just came upon us that the top six was reachable and, and I thought once we once we seen that and and we knew we could get it. I think we were quite quietly confident that, that we could reach it. And then once we reached that, St Mirren are only two points ahead of us now. So it's, a, like I say, it's another reachable target for us to get. What would it mean to you and the group to mm -hmm. secure European football? Oh, it'd be massive for the club. I'm not, I'm not quite sure how long it's been since, they mentioned 20 odd years maybe, since since the club last got there, I think. Um, so it would be massive for the club, especially just coming up through, through the Championship last season. And, and uh, I think it's massive credit to the boys if we can get that. But... Um, Listen, we're, we're happy with how the season's gone, but we're not, we're not fully satisfied just yet. Just what sort of a game can you expect against um, St Mirren John mm -hmm. on Saturday? Because 
two good, two really good footballing teams. Yeah, I had no two two really good teams. So no, um, I think we just kind of focus on ourselves. Like I say, we've not won the last four games, so that's uh, that's quite disappointing for us as a group. So I think it, it's got to be a tough game. I think any game against a team in this league's got to be difficult. So it's um, it will be an interesting game, but it's uh, hopefully one we can come out on top of. It, there's so much at stake with the close proximity of the two teams. It's going to be a, a thrilling race for that final European spot. Isn't it? Uh -huh. No, it'll be, it'll be a really good a good race, hopefully. And uh, hopefully after this weekend, we put ourselves in the driving seat in that race. So it's um, like like we said before, it's in our own hands. St Mirren will be saying the same, but we can only really focus on ourselves. So we're, uh, we're in control of our own destiny. It's a huge game. Do you treat it as a cup final? Um. I wouldn't say it's a cup final because there is still more, more games to be played after it, but um, I suppose you could you could also flip that and say every, every game in this league could be a cup final with the position you're in. So um, I wouldn't say I wouldn't say it's definitely got to be the the answer for who's got to get that fifth spot, but it's got to have a big say. Yeah, it could it could certainly lay down a big marker if we can get the three points. Yeah, obviously, like I say, both both teams are in in the driving seat for their own destiny. So whoever whoever gets the result on Saturday is is in control of how the season how the season pans out really. And the fact that you've very recently acquitted yourselves very well against both halves of the old firm, mm -hmm. how much heart does that give you for the remaining games? Uh -huh. um, like I say, our season won't be defined against the old firm, but it's uh, it's definitely nice to put the performances in, I think, pleasing with the back-to-back the -back clean sheets and, and two points on the board against Aberdeen and Rangers, those were pleasing games coming off the back of a disappointing Mullable result. So I think our reaction to disappointing results have been really good when you look back to the Celtic game we then go three games quite positively after that and then the disappointment for the Motherwell game to bounce back again. So um, I think after that defeat against Celtic there, hopefully it's another another positive result coming. And you rightly praised the manager um, a few minutes ago. Um, he's done a fantastic job, hasn't he? He's assembling something really exciting here, isn't he? Mm -hmm. No, definitely. I, I could see that when I was here at the start of the season before, before I get recalled back to Norwich. You could see it was a special group and it was got to be a really positive year for Dundee, I was I was in no doubt to say that, so I'm very grateful for him bringing me back into that and, and experiencing it, because it's a great dressing room to come into and like you said, he's he only had a couple of players at the start of the season signed, so it pretty much is his own team and, and he's been able to put his own stamp on it, so no credit where it's due to him, because it's, it's a really good team. Absolutely, and what about yourself, what about your own future, would you be open to a, a, a Dundee return? Ah, definitely. I think you'd be you'd be silly to roll that out. Um, so, I mean, the contract's up at the end of the season. I've not really had too much thought about next season. Kind of just taking it game by game. A little cliche, but that is that is kind of what it is. Do you know what I mean? So, um, no, there's there's been some talks. Um, so hopefully that can get resolved quite quite soon on where my future is, whether it's um, on Scotland or whether it's down in England. So I'm quite quite open to what what's out there. But it's, it's, it's a definite uh, possibility that would appeal to you then, you know, the, the chance to come back here and, you know, kick on with a, a really entertaining, enterprising Dundee side. Definitely. I think the club's going places, so like I say, you'd, you'd be silly to roll that out. So it's, uh, it's definitely a club that, that's on the up and, and it's, uh, it is really going places, so not to be excited to be a part of that. Thanks, John. What would you say your highlights have been since you've come here in January to, to Dens? Uh, I mean... <sighs> My, my sort of aim coming back in, I mean, when I got injured in, in November, if you said to me that, that you'd, you'd get a run of games in the SPL in this half of the season, you'd kind of say, oh, I'm not really too sure. So the main goal was really just coming back up and, and ticking off the games and, and showing people that you can just capable of playing at this level. So I wouldn't say there's been an individual highlight, but it's uh, it's just been nice to be rewarded with the games um, and, and getting a run. And, and looking at the, the squad there, the, there's a competency of, of goalkeepers. There's mm -hmm. Harry Sharp and... And obviously Carson as well and yourself. Yeah. So there's, uh, it's not been an easy job to make that yours. No, it's not. No, I think when I was here start of the season as well before before Trevor came in, it was a, it was a good goalkeeping group as well. You know, you've got the experience with legs and, and you've got Harry as well. So it was a good group and it, it's a really enjoyable group to be part of as well, training every day. So it's um, no, it's, it's, listen, the manager wants competition in every place and, and that happens to be in goal as well. So no, it's it's um, it's a good position to be in. Is it harder in the goalkeeping position because you've only got one slot? I think it's, it's definitely harder to, to gain the trust of any manager because you can't really get 10 minutes on one game and then half an hour the next game. It's If you don't start, you don't really play. That tends to be the, the way it goes. So it's um, it's definitely hard to get in and then, and then once you're there, it's even harder keeping it. So it's, um, it's a, a unique position, but it's, it's one that I quite like.